Hi everyone, I'm Don Cravens Jr., Executive Director of the National Urban League's Washington Bureau, and this is your Washington Update and the top three things that you need to know. Well, we've got our results from last week's elections, and as you know, businessman Donald Trump was elected as the next President of the United States. His victory is what many are calling a stunning and unprecedented upset. In response to the outcome of this election, the National Urban League, along with our six civil rights partners, the NAACP, the National Action Network, the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, and the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights affirmed that the top priority for our organizations in the upcoming weeks and months is to address any threat to the most vulnerable citizens and our still young democracy by the incoming administration. President-elect Trump used very divisive racial speech during this election. This language has led to a wave of hate crimes sweeping across the country with perpetrators invoking the name of the president-elect and the appointment of a chief strategist with a record of promoting racial, anti-Semitic, and anti-woman rhetoric is deeply troubling. As a civil rights organization, we at the National Urban League will continue to battle discrimination, racial injustice, and barriers to equal opportunity as we've done for decades. And as always, we will advocate for the next president of the United States to honor and prioritize the constitutional guarantees of equal protection, due process, and full citizenship for every American. We hope the president-elect will meaningfully repudiate the hate crimes and the attacks undertaken in his name and embrace his obligation to be a president for all Americans. You can read the National Urban League's full statement below. Election Day wasn't all controversial. It also brought some good news. While Congress remains in the control of leaders with a demonstrated history of obstructionism, we are encouraged by the election of the most diverse Congress in the United States history. When the 115th United States Congress is seated in January, it will boast of the largest ever Congressional Black Caucus, Congressional Hispanic Caucus, and Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. It will boast of 100 women lawmakers, including several history-making women. Those women are Pramila Jayapal, the first Indian American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives, Catherine Cortez Masto, the first Latina elected United States Senator, Ms. Tammy Duckworth, who was a congresswoman from the state of Illinois, she now has a promotion. She'll be the first Thai American elected to the United States Senate. Also, Ms. Lisa Blunt Rochester will serve as the first African American and first woman elected to represent the state of Delaware. And last but not least, Ms. Kamala Harris, who will be the second black woman elected to the United States Senate. Uh, she's representing the state of California. We are encouraged by the election of a Congress that is more representative of America. And we look forward to working with these lawmakers in the months and the years to come. Last but not least, let me give you a little bit of the congressional landscape uh, that came about as a result of this year's election. Capping what was a dire night for Democrats, the Republicans retained their majorities in both the Senate and the House. The night began with, ma ma with majority control of the United States Senate up for grabs, with 34 of 100 seats available. Democrats had hoped on taking three to six seats from the Republicans, but they gained just two seats. Congresswoman Tammy Duckworth, who's a double amputee Iraqi war veteran, will take Republican Mark Kirk's place in the state of Illinois. And Governor Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire defeated incumbent Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte. In the House, Democrats picked up seven seats. They picked up seats in Florida, New Jersey, Illinois, Virginia, and Nevada. However, they failed to take the majority. They needed 30 seats, and they only picked up seven. Therefore, Republicans will, contain, will retain control of the United States House by a wider than expected margin, 239 seats to 193 seats. With Republicans poised to take control of the White House and the Congress, Time will tell what that means for the National Urban League's policy priorities, our movement, as well as the rest of the nation. Well, that's going to do it for this week's Washington Update. I'm Don Cravens, Jr. Thanks for what you do for and in the movement. I'll see you next week.